Hey, this is Anthony Threbzilla. You can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new AGV Sport Modular Helmet, available at Revzilla.com. This is the Sport Modular. It has a terrible name. It also costs over $750. But this is one of the coolest helmets I've seen and one of the most technical helmets I've seen in years. We absolutely love it. Let me tell you why. The first thing you're gonna note is this is a modular helmet from AGV. Again, called the Sport Modular, generic name, I know. But if we look at it, this is full, 3K carbon fiber. So stylistically, again, from an aesthetic, it's beautiful. We don't typically see a lot of full 3K carbon fibers, if not regular carbon fibers, fiber helmets made to be modular. But here's the benefit of that, and this is why this helmet is a dramatic departure from the best of the other north of $500 modulars you might see on the market. This helmet weighs three pounds, four ounces, and this is the first time ever that the chin bar mechanism is also done in full 3K carbon fiber. I'm gonna say that one more time. Three pounds, four ounces for a $750 gloss or matte carbon fiber helmet. You have graphics from there, but again, designed to be versatile, designed to be lightweight, designed for whatever type of riding you're doing, really in any riding scenario outside of track days because it is modular. But again, three pounds, four ounces is the lightest of the light regardless of any helmet you compare it to. Now, if I compare it to the helmets in its competitive set from other premium manufacturers, namely Schubert, yes, yeah, Schubert, you're gonna get sad, but I'm going there. This helmet's three pounds, four ounces. A Schuber C4 is four pounds or just over four pounds. Nearly a pound different. And for frame of reference, when we think about helmets in general, a reasonably light helmet's three and a half pounds, three pounds, eight ounces. A decent helmet's 310, 312. Anything over 312, when you get up closer to that four pound mark, that's a heavy helmet. For long distance rides, you're going to feel that weight regardless of how it is going to be balanced. So this helmet ultimately is ultra lightweight compared to aggressive race helmets or other premium carbon fiber helmets. And compared to its competitive set, it's almost playing in a different field. Now I told you it was over the $700 mark. You're gonna have to pay for that. And the graphics are over the $800 mark. Again, you're gonna have to pay for that. But this is truly zero to one R&D in the motorcycle realm. And I know I'm ranting at this point, I'll take it back a notch, but we only see iterations like this come around every once in a while. And AGV, Dianese, Italian Legendary Protection, the entire team out of Italy whom we know so well, you guys have done an excellent job. This could be the only helmet if you ride in any riding style outside of track days that you own. It's aggressive, you could ride it in the tuck, you could ride it in the three quarter position, you could certainly ride it like on my Multistrada in an upright riding position and be super happy. It even has an adjustable wing on the back to make it be a zero a negative force at around 130 miles an hour. So again, they've knocked it out of the park. Now, quick note on fitment here. And remember, you're looking at a modular, keep that in mind. This is gonna be an intermediate oval head shape, meaning it's gonna fit 80% of the market. Just like my head, a little bit longer front to back. Again, not overly round, not overly narrow. Thank you for doing that, AGV. Again, making it accessible to most people that don't have one of the outlier head shapes, which would be round and super narrow. And I will tell you too, I'm gonna to flip this up one more time. It's a red button down here on the bottom. Through the interior, typically with a modular helmet, you'd have a little bit more room because it has to have this hinge. And again, a little bit more forgiving in the cheek pads. It absolutely does, but I'll also tell you from a fit standpoint, this guy's 3K carbon fiber. It is super strong, it doesn't flex. Pick up any other modular helmet on the market, watch our other videos, visit your local dealership, and try to go like this. And I'm pushing on it really hard, you can tell. The helmet's gonna move and it's going to flex. This helmet's 3K carbon fiber. First time I ever saw 3K carbon fiber, it was in the world of F1 for aerodynamics on cars that go 200 miles an hour and it's also using metal hardware. And the metal hardware, inclusive of double D-rings in titanium, pull this helmet together, very safe, very sturdy, DOT, ECE rated, again, with a weight profile that is just a juggernaut. So again, on the fit side, use the size chart, no surprises. Remember, intermediate, oval, we'll ship for free. And I'd love it if you'd click our logo, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, leave me your comments, your questions, your feedback on the AGV Sport Modular. Let me know if you love it as much as I love it. Let me know if you hate the name as much as I hate the name. Again, AGV, you're Italian, everything's fancy and magical with a flourish. Give it a name like that, it's fine. I'll forgive you if you change the, next, the name next year and we have to reshoot it. Now, diving to the lid itself, let's talk about some of the other nuances. Notice, Pinlock Max Vision. And this shield, you're gonna know this shield. This shield came right out of the piece to family, which we've seen across the board for so many of the AGV helmets in their newer lines. Center lock, you have a city position, again, 
doesn't have the strongest detents, I might knock it there. Again, for a touring helmet, you want a few extra detents there, but it's rock solid and you have pin lock coming stock in the box. The other thing about this helmet, which is a new technological advancement, and again, I'm gonna talk about it before I get to our drop down sun visor here, I wanna put that up, is this side pod mechanism. This is as micro as micro comes, and this is a shield change mechanism rather, but it ties in right on top of the pivot system for the entire chin bar. It's one hinge. Check out any other helmets on the market that are modular. Sometimes they have two, sometimes it's like another half inch thick. What AGV's done here by being able to make this as tiny as they've done it, is they've shrunk the aerodynamic profile of a super light helmet. And again, this is a small shell. I already have a very low profile here. It comes in three different shell sizes as they change the EPS for the different fit schemes. But again, super, super thin, super out of the way. And if we go like this, I'm gonna show you right here. Actually, I'm gonna put it down to do it. Notice this little pull right there, that slides down that pops this shield mechanism right off. And again, you don't really need to change the shields that often because you'll notice right down here where my finger is, this is your actuator done with a cable mounted system that isn't creaky, very smooth, locks into place. This is your drop down sun visor system. So I'm gonna push the center lock one more time, bring it up, again, scratch resistant, UV resistant, comes down far enough, that allows you to not have to have a second shield. And again, you have that functionality, very versatile. I don't care if you're a sport commuter or a commuter, multi-season tourer, I don't care if you ride a Beamer or a V-Strom or a Multistrata like I do, this helmet will work in all scenarios. You just need to be able to make the investment and afford it. Again, it is not going to be cheap. Working our way around the rest of the helmet, notice, open and close in your chin vent, it's aggressive, even the back is thoughtful and intentional. The way the design ties in, that's gonna vent to the cheek, it's also, or vent to the face, also venting to the shield here to aid in the pin lock system, which again, pin lock uses the laws of physics like a double pane window to make sure you don't get any fog. This helps enhance that. Moving our way up, this is one of the few other gripes we have with this helmet, and that's really gonna be that this top chimney vent is a single vent, vents into the helmet, there are plenty of grooves inside, that's fine but it's like the cheapest feeling thing on the helmet itself. The way it moves, the way you touch it, the way it feels to your finger, even the slide. It doesn't feel overly cheap, it's just not the same level of fit and finish that we see throughout the rest of this beautiful, beautiful R&D engineering piece. Now, moving to the back here, multiple positions here on our rear wing, again, to fine tune it, fine tune it for downforce. It's cool, it works a little bit, we don't think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but again, the fact that they've added it in, only a rise done similar, and that's in their race helmets. Now let's talk about the shell a little bit further here, right? We've talked about 3K done in the autoclave. Let's talk about the quiet factor. Now, this helmet, AGV claims, is going to be as quiet as the Schubert series of helmets, like the C3 Pro and the C4. What I'm going to tell you is that we rode in them, we ride in them all, and I don't think that's true. I believe this helmet is slightly louder than the Schubert's. So if you, refuse to use any kind of earplugs, and you have to have the bone stock quietest helmet around, that helmet's gonna be much heavier and that's going to be a Schubert. But for this helmet, the level of quiet was fine. It's, again, not falling into the place of loud. We don't think this is a loud helmet. It's just not as quiet as the Schubert. We could not reproduce AGB's results. They're making a bit of a claim, we're calling them on it, but for you, don't not pick this helmet because it's not as quiet as the Schubert unless you have to have the quietest on the market. Or don't not pick this helmet because it's going to be too loud. We don't think it's loud. We just don't think it's as quiet as the quietest on the market. Again, there's a big difference there. The versatility and quiet factor are just fine. It's not a detractor in our eyes. So if we swing it around to the back here, you're gonna get a view of what's going on towards the back of this helmet. Again, very simple, everything tying itself together quite nicely. You have a bit of a vent down towards the bottom here. You have the ability for this air to escape through the bottom. Now let's pull it out put it on its side and work our way through the guts here. If we look at the bottom here, this is your mechanism for opening and closing the chin mechanism. It's fine, it's easy, one hand actuation. If we move into the inside of this helmet, there's a feature here that you're not realizing exists that we dig. The one side of this interior comfort liner is considered Ritmo, and that is a warming material that's going to block some of the vents and ultimately enhance the warmth retained for cold weather riding. If you flip this liner, it becomes Shalimar, which is a different material, which enhances cooling, will wick sweat a little bit different, and enhance the cooling factor of this helmet for hot weather rides. Again, they're thinking true for season. AGV Dionese, legendary protection. I like where you're going here. R&D technology driven with a feature set that's going to allow somebody to maximize 
customize wearing this in all the different climates. I don't want this helmet to be too warm and then not wear it in the or not wear it in the summer and ultimately have invested all this money and then I can't use it all year round. Non-removable cheek pad up front. Remember, we talked about metallic hardware. Some of the cheaper competitors are going to use plastic here. And we work our way in here to the inner lining. There's a few things going on here. First off, you have some reflective, which is nice, depending on your riding position. Secondarily, it's a micro suede. That's that Charlemagne or Ritmo. It's going to be very comfortable against the skin. But thirdly, it's a feature that I don't like. Is it a deal breaker for me? It's not because ultimately you can tell that I'm way positive on the slid. Three points of connection come, across, come out for this cheek pad, and then what happens here is you realize, oh, damn it, this neck roll and cheek pad are one piece, so I have to go all the way across with it. I like these to be separate. They made the choice to put them together. You saw that that wasn't the end of the world for me to take it out. It makes it a little bit more of a pain in the backside to put it back in. Again, not a deal breaker but not as ideal as I would have liked to have seen it. Now on the inside of this lid, once I've done that, I do have speaker pocket pads, which are insulators, which cover the, spocket, the pocket cutaway for the speakers. Again, you have the ability to pull these out or leave them in. It's really up to you and up to fit. And we work our way to the inside, you're gonna see this piece of a foam. This is, in Buzzsaw's words, adhesived in, which is correct. It is adhered to the inside of this lid. Once you remove it, it is glued. You have to glue it back in. But that's a speaker pocket. If you want to add a Bluetooth comm unit, which I would recommend be done via sticky mount because clamp mounts get tough with modulars, what you have the ability to do is add a little bit more space by removing that adhered piece, and you put your speaker inside, and then it's seamless and doesn't create a pressure point. Now, with the rest of the comfort liner, which we talked about being Ritmo or Shalimar, we do have big snaps there towards the bottom. As we pull it towards the front here, they're going to be eyelet hooks or eye hooks that are going to work directly to the EPS itself, so no pressure point there. And if we look at it, notice, reversible cooler side, there's our Shalimar, and if I turn it like this, there's my Ritmo. Again, slight differences. You're gonna notice them in the temperature. You're not gonna notice them in the feel. Both have a very premium feel. Again, kudos to you, AGV. You're doing the technology piece quite well. We talked about our double D-ring done in titanium for wake savings. Again, if you're going three pounds, four ounces, why not shave off everything you can? And then again, there is your optically correct drop-down sun visor, and if I move it up just like this, you're going to see big, big vent holes venting directly to the channels, front and rear. Remember, that rear spoiler has ventilation underneath it. You even have additional venting underneath and, vent and additional channeling underneath these mesh pieces up here that are kind of baked in. Again, they're doing that to finish the inside of the lid. But AGV has really done an excellent job really thinking about the rebuttals, thinking through the entirety of the helmet. Maybe they make a rolling chain and, and, and make, this, make this top vent a little less chintzy, and maybe they add another D10 or two. And outside of that, I can't really, if they fix those two things, I really couldn't come up with much that I would gripe about. Maybe I'd still gripe about the single piece comfort liner. But overall, three pounds, four ounces, technology advancement, first time seeing a 3K carbon fiber or a carbon fiber period for that matter, uh, chin bar, getting down into a range of race thoroughbred weights, but done with the full featured functionality of a modular. And again, the only question I have an answer today is if this is the first modular helmet video you're ever watching and you're saying, why modular? Is that for smokers? No, it's not for smokers. It's for anybody that wants the ability to flip the face up, that's touring, talk to someone riding, pull over to a gas station, not have to take their entire helmet off. There are some folks that just love the lack of claustrophobia by being able to pull it up whenever they want. Again, it is certainly a choice, but in this range, the gold standard has typically been Schubert. Now you have a strong competitor here in the AGV, Sport Modular with a terrible name, but being industry leading from a technology standpoint. Now, that being said, the next step in your journey is to click the info button, your desktop, your mobile device, visit the product detail page, read other rider reviews. You shouldn't just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship free over 39 bucks. If you want to talk to a gear geek, call us. We'll walk you through this in its entirety. We'll help you decipher anything I didn't explain today. See us at RevZilla.com via email or 877-792-9455 via phone. Thanks for watching our detail breakdown. Don't forget to subscribe to us, stay up to date with our opinion, the latest and greatest in the motor universe on our YouTube channel. I'm Anthony, we'll see you next time.